If you're a beginner trying to learn West Coast Swing, this is the video that's gonna help you develop confidence so you can look great on the dance floor. My name is Brian B. I'm Miss Megan. From West Coast Swing Online, and in today's video, we're gonna break down the nine most common patterns of West Coast Swing. At the end of the video, we're gonna do it to music for you. We're gonna show you a mini routine to help you practice. We're gonna answer a couple of the common struggles that you might have, and we're gonna even tell you the seven patterns to learn next. So with all that being said, let's get started. Okay gang, the first two patterns, the first pattern we're gonna learn is called the sugar push. Now this is the exact same way that we teach it in our group class. So the first pattern we have is called the sugar push, also called the push break. It's six beats and it sounds like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So this is an important time to cover some of the basics of West Coast Swing and that it is a slotted dance. What's a slot, Miss Megan? It is something that goes up and down. It is not gonna go all over the place. So imagine train tracks, and the rule is the follower gets in the train tracks, and as we get going, the leader's gonna be the one that gets out of the train tracks. So in a sugar push, let's do our footwork side by side. As the leader, we walk back with two small steps for one, two. We're gonna do a triple step. That's three steps in two beats of mu music. We're gonna count it like this, three and four. Then we're gonna do a triple step that stays in place for five and six, or we can count it in walks and triples. So walks and triples are? Walk, walk, triple step, triple step. So practice that by yourself. Let's do it two times real quick. We have one, two, three, and four, five and six, or? Walk, walk, triple step, triple step. So the first handful of patterns are gonna work with those walks and triples. They call them six count patterns. We're gonna get to some eight count patterns next, but let's cover the basic handhold. So if you were to make a toy gun with your hand as the leader, hook these fingers underneath, we have what's called an away connection from our partner. So that's just a little bit of weight back, not so much that we're gonna fall over, but that we're connected here. This hand is gonna go up as a wall, ESPN 360 cam, let's come over here. This is just gonna go as a wall to your partner with your punching knuckles as the follower headed in. So later on, if I wanted to keep that hand for another pattern, that will work well. So if we go back to our original side, our sugar push looks like this. I leave my hands out as a wall for Miss Megan. One, two, I stop her. We triple, three, and on the fourth step, I step forward, she steps back for count four, and then we do what we call an anchor step. That's the final triple of your West Coast Swing patterns. It's a triple step that, like an anchor, stays in place. We're gonna talk about that more in a second, but let's do this two times. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And since the anchor step is gonna be at, all, at the end of all of your patterns, it's good to have some good etiquette with that now. So, good etiquette for your anchor step is that the right foot for the leader or the left foot for the follower is gonna stay tucked back. So like heel to instep, that keeps me anchored back away from my partner. So if we practice that in the sugar push, and that's gonna be the same for all of the patterns we go through. We have one, two, three, and four, five, and six, tucking this foot back. Common mistake is that you're not gonna let that foot stay back. So I want you to write in the beginning, one, two, three, and four, five and six, keep that foot back. So some of the common mistakes that I see leaders make for sure, and you can cover what the followers do wrong, is leaders, I don't wanna pull my partner when I walk back. I just wanna have what we call an away connection, so our elbows are down, there's a little tension between us. I just walk back, three and. Next problem is you know she needs to go back, forward for you, and you tend to send her back. So I want you to keep the hand still, one, two, three and four, five and six. So for the followers, what do they think about? Followers, so we have one, two. We need to connect forward here. A lot of the times you're not gonna want to connect forward, so you stop yourself and you go back on your own. You wanna walk in. So the analogy that I use if we walk away from the wall is that if you were on roller skates, you'd roll until I stopped you and you'd roll until I stopped you. So that's a good way to think about it. One, two, three and four, five and six. So that's the sugar push, also called the push break. That's your first basic. The second basic, which goes really well, and as we go through this video, we're gonna put these in little mini two pattern uh, increments that you can practice, is the left side pass. One, two, three and four, five and six. One, two, three and four, 
five, and six. Now this is called the left side pass because Megan passes on my left side. And I know that's confusing for us leaders, especially the analytical ones, because I'm going out of the slot to my right, but it's called the left side pass. So it's defined by which side she's passing me on. So if we go back to those train tracks, and we just did the footwork, leaders, I have to step back and out of the way, one, two, as she passes, three, and on count four, I get back in, anchor step, or my five and six, so you'll be able to see it better for this side. So leaders, I'm moving back and diagonal for one, I'm out of her way for two. I do my triple step, three and four, where I step back in the slot, and we anchor five and six. For the followers footwork. Followers, we have a walk, walk. On our triple step, we are going to go side, cross, back, and triple step. If we did that again, we have walk, walk, side, cross, back, triple step. And leading this is the easiest pattern you're going to lead in West Coast Swing, is literally as I'm stepping back and diagonal, one, two, my body tells her where to go. We keep that connection, that away connection, the entire time, Megan's tethered away, as I, and I can even look a little bit to my left, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So leaders, again, common problems, I want to make sure that I get out of the slot. Sometimes this will happen, and I'll drag the followers along because I didn't get out of the way. I need to get out of the way to let her have the slot as she goes past. If we count this in numbers, and then we'll cover the followers' uh, biggest mistake in the left side pass, we have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So for the followers, what's the biggest common mistake? Followers, our biggest common mistake is going way too big on our first two walks. All right, so we need to stay in front of our leader for that part, so one, two. If I count two, I do not wanna be way up here. I wanna stay in front of my leader. So we, so have, we have one, two, three, and four, five and six. And that's a good common rule of West Coast Swing. Almost on no patterns will you pass the leader on the first two steps. So even though you're doing a walk, walk to start almost every pattern, you're not going to be past him on the one, two. You're going to stay on this side. Megan instinctively did a good job of staying on that side for the first two beats, passes on the next two beats, and stays back for the next two beats. The other common problem for the follower is simply this. If the leader doesn't get out of the way, the follower does a nice job, and they're nice, you guys are nice and you go around, yeah. but I want you to go straight forward. That's your slot. And if I don't get out of the way effectively, now I know, right? So you <laughs> stay in that slot and I get out of the way. So you can practice these two patterns, the sugar push and the left side pass back and forth. So we go sugar push, two, three, and four, and a left side pass, left side, pass, three, and four, sugar push, sugar push, two, three and four, and a left side pass, left side pass, three and four, five and six. Those are your first two patterns. They work really well practicing them back and forth. The next two patterns we're gonna put together are called the sugar tuck and the right side pass. And this is where it starts to get kind of cool and fun. So the sugar tuck and right side pass look like this. Sugar tuck, two, three and four, five and six. Right side pass, three and four, five and six. So we got good news and bad news about that. The good news for the sugar tuck, the next pattern we're going to do, is the footwork for the leaders is the same as the sugar push. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Exactly the same as your sugar push. We take two small steps back for one, two. We make a small triple forward for three and four, stepping forward, anchor stepping in place with my right foot behind for five and six, right? One more time. We have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. For the followers, they got a little bit more to worry about. All right, the first half is the same. So we have walk, walk, together, together. Instead of going back, we are gonna go away, kind of on a 45 degree angle. That does not mean turn everything, but we'll get there in a minute. So we're away. Now our anchor step is going to curve around for a triple step. Let's do that again. We have walk, walk together together away and triple around so to lead this right we talked about leading west coast swing all i have to do is step back there's another way i can lead it is i raise my hand it's also going to bring my follower to me so when i'm initiating the sugar push i'm raising my hand immediately one 
two, we're connected forward towards each other with a little bit of pressure. We're gonna stay here during three and, and on count four, I'm gonna send that hand that way. I'm gonna give you a tip in a second and take it over her head slowly on the five and six. So right now your hand's gonna be stuck on top. I want you to pop it to the pinky side of the finger with your little gun and try it again. We're gonna raise the hand as soon as we move back. One, two. At this point, I'm going to try to turn my hand a little bit this way so my fingers are faced the direction Megan's going. Three and four, there's a moment and I take some time on five and six. The hand returns here on five and six. Let's do that one more time with walks and triples. A walk, walk, triple step, triple step. Now we got a problem. Leader's right hand is on top, which is gonna make a natural segue to our right side pass. We also call this an underarm turn. Let's show it to you once. One, two, three, and four five and six and magically and for no extra charge the hand will fix itself so let's talk about the right side pass right side pass the followers passing on my right side so leaders i have to vacate the slot to my left couple different ways i can do the footwork the easiest way is back and together one two she passes on three and four five and six if i do it again on one two she's passing on my right side so i have to get out this way we have one two Three and four, five and six. For the followers, I'll followers, step out of the way. This is the same footwork that you had for your left side pass. Good news Yay. for you guys. All right, so you're going walk, walk, side, cross, back, and triple step. So again, we have one, two, three, and four, Five and six. So if we're leading the right side pass from a normal grip, right, we're going to show you how to put those two patterns together. I want to be able to look at my watch by count two. So just practice that by yourself. Just turn your hand up so you can see your watch and let your fingers rotate so Megan doesn't really change her, chan her hand orientation. So I want that by count two. I'm getting out of the slot for one, two. The hand is changed. She passes underneath three and four, five and six. You'll see it really well on this side. A one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So that's your right side pass. This is a good time to start thinking about West Coast Swing in two beat increments. So where are you in every two beats? Because those little points are gonna matter. We're gonna cover that at the very end of the video. But if we put these two together, the sugar tuck and the right side pass, we're gonna raise the hand one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Now the right, or the, uh, right side pass or underarm turn, one, two, three and four, five and six. From the other side, one hand up, three and four, over her head. One, two, three and four, five and six. So those are your first four patterns of West Coast Swing. Next up is gonna be the left side pass with an inside turn. So earlier, we did this left side pass. One, two, three and four, five and six, but now we're gonna send Miss Megan for a turn. Same footwork for me, a lot of different stuff for the followers. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So leaders, it's the same footwork for you as the left side pass, but followers have completely different footwork. So Miss Megan's gonna take over and explain. All right, so an inside turn, we get to turn. Okay, so we have walk, walk. I will explain how we prep in a minute, but from here, we are gonna have three triple steps turning to our left. So you're going to triple step. And then we have our anchor step. So let's do that again. We walk back to the side. And this is worth practicing all by yourself with no one dragging on you because yes. we can mess it up. Yes. <laughs> all right, so we have walk, walk. When we do those walks, you just wanna think about your rib going over that foot. So you're just gonna go over that foot and over that foot. That does not mean this. The zombie. No Frankenstein. <laughs> All right, so we have walk, walk. Now we're turning to our left and just keep going. So you're gonna triple step. And then we have our anchor step, triple step. So leaders, 
we have to do what we call a prep. We're going to cover this in a couple of different ways. But a prep means I need to prepare Megan to spin, right? So I need to give her some communication through my hand. So I'm going to give you two different ways to do this. This is the way you can do it as a beginner. And then I'm going to give you the way that you want to work towards as you get better. So as a beginner, it's good to prep both steps. I prep Megan four on the right and four on the left. So this hand is moving slightly to my right, slightly to my left. One, two. This sometimes seems counterintuitive, but she's now prepped and prepared to spin. Now I'm going to take this over her head for three and four, five and six. If you want to understand how that hand works, we do something in all of our videos, most of our videos, called baby steps, where we practice the hands without the footwork. So leaders, I just want you to start to turn your wristwatch to the sky and change so you can see your watch and take this over your partner's head. So you want to just get used to that hand. Start to change this up so you can see the watch and use your fingers to curl over her head. That's what's happening in the inside turn. Prep comes first. One, prep, two. Megan's prepared to spin. Remember those two bit increments? I'm going to think about that too. Over her head for three and four. Three and four. I have to step back in the slot on this side. Five and six. Let's do it two more times. One, two, three and four. Five, stop there because in our class we would never do multiple turns over and over. So now a good way to practice this is just a simple left side pass. Left side pass with no turn, anchor step. Now prep the turn, inside turn, anchor step, left side pass, triple step, triple step. So as we go through the video, we'll try to put these in ways that you can practice multiple patterns in a way that would be normal when you social dance this to music. So, I said before I was going to cover a cooler way to prep your, your inside turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. The beginner way is that I prep both steps. But in reality, I don't need the first prep, or she doesn't need the first prep. She needs the second. So as we get better and we have good connection and good away connection, I don't need to prep the first step. I get good and I can just prep the second step. Now, why would I prep both? Because when I'm new, maybe my connection isn't good and I as the leader want a little extra information going to my follower. But if you've got a teacher where you come from and they say you don't need to prep the first step, you don't. That's the cool way to do it. So on to the next pattern, the passing tuck. So good news for the leaders. Remember our left side pass where the follower passes in the left, exact same footwork. But now we're going to do a passing tuck and tuck her in. So what we're basically doing is combining, if you remember earlier, the left side pass and the sugar tuck, where we tucked her away. We're going to combine both those patterns. So footwork, exact same for the leaders. One, two, as I put the hand up, three and four, five and six. But the followers have completely different footwork. Followers, our footwork is a little bit like our left side pass and our sugar tuck combined. Smooshed together, they had a baby. Smooshed together. All right, so we have walk, walk. We are still going to go side cross, but we're going to angle into that connection a little bit more. So you're going to go side cross. Now from here, you're going to step out like your sugar tuck, so out, and then around for five and six. So if we did that again, we have walk, walk, side cross, out, triple around. Cool, let's look at it from this side. So leaders, again, I want you to start to think about those baby steps. If I want to tuck Miss Megan, I want to raise this hand to what I call a mini high five, right? Never got popularized. We had a high five, that was popular, and we had a low five or 10, but the mini high five never got popular, but it's really good for West Coast Swing because I want to bring this hand up into this mini high five right here. So I want to pull it up. One, two, three, and. On count four, my hand has to go away while I go into the slot. Four. Now it's the same as the sugar tuck. I slowly take the hand over on five and six. And that's why I said before, it's good to think about this. All of your patterns, doesn't matter how advanced you get, where are you every two beats? Because that matters. Two, four, six, and eight. That's going to matter. So we get ready for one, two. I'm beginning to raise the hand. Three and four. Four, that's where I need her to be on count four, over the head five and six. Now, you're going to end up on the top side, right, where my hand is on the top. So you could do a sugar push and just fix the hand if you want, and that's totally acceptable for beginner class. But if you're cooler, and we want you to be as cool as possible so you can have confidence and look good dancing West Coast Swing, 
when I get to the sugar tuck, my hand's gonna end up on top. A natural pattern is that right side pass or underarm turn to just flip those back and forth. So now you have a way to practice the passing tuck, three and four, five and six, and a right side pass, three and four, five and six. So hopefully as the leader, you start to put these patterns together in a way that makes sense in your brain. We've been doing this a long time, 18 years here at the studio and probably eight years online. So these are the best ways that we found to put these patterns together while you're learning them. So at that, with that being said, these have all been six count patterns. Next up, we have two eight count patterns. Then we have what's called a starter step, which I know it's a starter step, but we're putting it at pattern nine because you only use it occasionally. So now we have an eight count pattern. It's called the whip. It looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. If we do it again, one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now, we're using our walks and triples, but we're adding an extra walk, walk. So for the leader's footwork, it starts a little bit like a right side pass. I'll give you a couple different ways to do this. The easiest way is back and together, right? If you're dancing in a West Coast swing class and you've got a cool teacher, they might go back and cross. That's totally fine too. Back and together is the easiest way. That's count two. On three and four, I'm gonna work my way across the slot. Three and on count four, I don't want to step in the slot. I want to step to the other side for count four. So we do that again. One, two, three, and four. I'm across the slot. Now I go sideways for count five, in the slot for count six, anchor seven and eight. Let's do it one more time before we get Megan in here. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I want you to see how that works with the follower just one time so you can kind of wrap your head around Then we'll have Megan do the followers footwork. One, two, three, and four. You can see I'm on this side of the slot. On count five, I get my foot out for five. I get back in for six, seven, and eight. But let's talk about Megan's footwork before we talk about how we lead this thing. Or I follow. am going to go from this okay, side, enough. I fair think. Fair enough. All right, so followers. We have a forward step and turning to a back step. And I will explain another version of that in just a second. So you have forward, back for your first two counts. Again, like Brian put it, if you have a cool instructor, they might say that you land sideways and then go back. But Either if you're way just works. learning, think back, because that's your end goal. <laughs> All right, so you're going forward, back. Now we have back, together forward now we're going to turn to our right again step back back triple step so we have forward back back together forward turn step back triple step so not to confuse you but we're going to revert actually you're right miss megan this is the right way to do it because you can see the lead miss megan's been at this for a while so leaders to lead this if i took my footwork out of it I have to use my hand to get her to step forward and back. Sometimes we call this little J hook lead where it has a little J. Again, different people teach it differently. This works for most of us. So I'm leading her forward and back. So a couple things have to happen. We have to establish that away connection. This is gonna be vital at this point in West Coast Swing because it's the only way we can communicate to each other. So with that away connection, as I step back, my hand goes slightly across and hooks. And at this point, I want Megan in front of me, not past me yet, but somewhere in front of me. Anywhere in front of me is good, but not past me. At this point, this hand is gonna go up to her basically back armpit. So I wanna imagine that half of my hand is on this side, half of my hand is this side. So if she was shaped like a box, I'd have half on one side, half curled around. So I'm presenting that hand nice and early so Megan knows one, two, cool? Now I've got her, my hands are gonna send her back together forward, so my hands are going back together forward. So if we do that together, sorry, Miss Megan. One, two, back together forward. I'm stepped across the slot. She's looking over my right shoulder. If you've ever taken a ballroom dance class and you have that same position just without all the head shape. Now I'm taking my right hand and sending her that way on count five, six, seven, and eight. Let's do it two times in a row. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Pro tip, look on count five liters where she's going. It's gonna be that direction. One, two, 
three, and four. I'm going to look five, six, seven, and eight to make it a little cooler. So that is your whip. Now, one of the questions that comes up with the whip is, how the heck do I know that it's an eight count pattern? And the answer is, you don't until you learn it. Like any dancing, if no one showed you the steps, you wouldn't accidentally do it in those rhythms. But at this point, you've learned six counts and it seems pretty comfortable. And it's tricky to sort out the six and eight count pattern. So again, one of the things we do in our classes is to practice that skill of dancing an eight count whip, right? Why do we know this? Because I have taught Megan the footwork. I hopefully do a good enough lead to get her to know it's a whip. And I've danced my first eight count pattern. But then you have to sort out, and this is tricky, to go back and forth between the six and eight counts. And at this stage, that's not an easy thing. So I want you to just do a simple sugar push. So the way to practice the whip is sugar push six count pattern, whip two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Sugar push two, three, and four, five, and six, and a whip two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So next up is another whip pattern. This isn't the most basic, but I think it's a good one to add to this video because again, you're gonna need to know that it exists as you level up in West Coast Swing. If we have a whip, we have to have a reverse whip. We don't have to, but Megan wanted to put it in, so we're doing it. So the reverse whip goes the opposite direction of the whip. We go one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. You want the good news or the bad news? Good news, it's the same footwork for the leaders as the basic whip. So I want to do my basic whip footwork and get really good at that. And once I do, I can teach Megan the reverse whip footwork and learn to lead it. All right, so followers, with the regular whip, we turned towards our partner. For the reverse whip, you are going to turn away from your partner to your left. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to have a walk walk. Now we're going to turn to the left, step together forward. Let's do that much one more time. We have walk, walk. We're going to turn, step together, and then count four is forward. From here on out, it's the same as your whip. Count five, you're going to turn to the right, step back, and triple step. So, so to lead this, this is tricky. So most of the time, Megan is used to going forward, forward, and continuing. That's what it's going to feel like, and that's what I want it to feel like turn. So a lot like that right side pass underarm turn. One, two. Remember the hand change? I can see my watch. Now, on a side pass, I just let her go underneath. Piece of cake. I don't add anything to it. But now I'm going to use this hand to wrap her around. So I want you to practice this. I want you to practice picking this hand up so I can see the watch. Taking a tight circle around her head so I can put my hand in there and pick up her back. So just practice the baby steps. Take the hand up, turn the fingers this way so I can see my watch, roll her around, be proactive about this hand and pick up that position. Because that's what's going on as we lead this. So I lead one, two, the hand comes slightly towards me to set her up to prep her to turn. Three, and I step across for count four. We finish five, six, seven, and eight. Let's do it two more times. One, the hand comes to me, slightly to me. I start to change my fingers, curve her around three and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So leaders, if you get good at leading this, you can get a lot of followers to do it because it's very proactive. Anytime I have two hands on my partner, I have a better chance of communicating than if I just have one. Mm -hmm. So for me as a leader, if I can get to this position, I can start to use this hand nice and early to help her around, and then she understands it's the whip. So again, if I want to practice the whip, I might do a whip, the, rather the reverse whip, right? And then I want to practice the skill of just dancing an underarm turn without turning her around. Then I want to do the reverse whip where I cut her off with that left hand so again, that's a skill you want to practice. So practice your right side passes and your whips back and forth. Now the final pattern is actually called a starter step. And the answer is why didn't I put it at the beginning? And I want you to stay at the end of the video because we're going to um, put this in a routine format for you. We're going to help you understand how all of the patterns relate back to the push pass and the whip. Um, I've got a special offer for you, our beginner course for only seven bucks. We got some cool stuff at the end for you. So for the starter step, I start here. So traditionally in ballroom dancing, we start in some sort 
cha-cha, rumba, some sort of a closed hold. In West Coast Swing, we traditionally do as well, right? So we're gonna start in this position, and we're gonna start with what we call a starter step, beginning of the dance. Hello, Miss Megan, would you like to dance? That'd be yes, you just shake the head, right? Oh, sorry, yes. And so it'd be a little bit informal to go, would you like to dance? Good, stay that far away. <laughs> we're gonna be there. And we're gonna talk about the history of how this got there. Let's do that now. Okay. So in the beginning of swing dancing, it was all done close, right? And they were doing things, Lindy Hop, it was Charleston, they were doing it close. And then one day, someone let go of their partner and they messed up and they danced back to each other, Shorty George Snowden, to get close together. But then they learned that if they pushed away, hence the term sugar push or push break, that we could use this position to have style, which makes West Coast Swing cool. Okay, but back to the starter step. Would you like to dance, Miss Megan? We take yes. a closed position, right? Now from here, it is traditional to do a starter step, which is a triple step and an anchor step. So it's gonna be kind of like this. One and two, three and four, right? If we count in triples, it's a triple step and a triple step. Another way to think about it is a triple step and an anchor step. Now from here, we can do lots of different stuff. We can lead a left side pass to start the dance. You could also use your starter step to open up immediately. We could go triple step and anchor away. Either way, you'll see the cool kids do it. They'll go like this. They'll go a triple step and a triple step, meaning they don't actually triple. They just sort of sway to feel their partner before they start any pattern. So from the starter step, triple and an anchor, triple step, anchor step. I can do any pattern that I know from that position. So you might be thinking, what do I do next, Brian B., if I really want to develop confidence and get good at West Coast Swing? Glad you asked. I got two things for you. Number one is the Ultimate Guide to Beginners. It's a course we did over on our website that has all of the patterns that you need to learn now, all the patterns you'll need to learn next, as well as which styling options you should focus on as a new dancer, which struggles you might have. We've been doing this for 18 years, and everything that we've learned has been put into that course. You can get it right here for $7. I also promise you right here on YouTube, I tell you which patterns you should learn next. We have a video called The Seven Patterns You Should Learn Next right here. And if you're interested in other dance styles, we have another channel called Social Dance Online, which we teach all of the rest of the non-West Coast Ring related dances. So we love you and we hope to see you on the dance floor soon.